Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. It's Jane from Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. Yay! Well, here is a, um, a an example of a tray I want to show you, but what we're going to actually be doing is making over this wood tray. I used to use a lot of wood trays um, in my workshops when I had an actual physical space, and they were really, really popular. I'm trying to find a place to offer them again. Man, it's it's hot. I'm schwitzing right now. <laughs> I didn't put the AC on and woo. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you this one because I used the, I think it was Fine Line Crackle the other day by Pentart. And thank you everybody for uh, putting in the comments the correct way to use it, some hints, because I really needed that. The one I'm used to using is by Polyvine. This is an example. If you, hey, Amanda, good morning, Sandy. So there's the crackle. I hope, can you guys see that? It's like porcelain. And it's just beautiful. And for and and I know there's a hey Shannon, good morning. I know there's a learning curve to the Pentart, but this is what I kept talking about, and that's why I wanted to show you this. Right? Look at that. It's just it's beautiful. So if there's a Pentart product that does this, let me know. This is Polyvine. All I did was put on, this was one of the first lives I did. I think you could still find it on my Chalk Mercantile Facebook page. But it's the two component system and then I finished it with a dark wax. I had people use paint to finish it and then put wax on it. And it's it, held, it holds up really, really well. So I wanted to show you that. I really like the Pentart. I just have to... Un you know, figure out how to use it. There, it's more um, nuanced, right? There's all these little things you have to know. So that's what I'm trying to learn. <gasps> Thank you, Shannon. You guys, if you haven't followed me, please do. And if you feel like somebody might enjoy seeing this, you know, seeing me <laughs> around with paint and stuff, feel free to, to sprinkle it about. All right. This is a wooden tray, right? This was used for a workshop. And I'm going to be painting it orange. And actually, it's coral. I'm using an Amy Howard at home color that I just grabbed. Um, it's called coral. And, you know, I'm making myself a little uncomfortable. And we should do that every now and again, right? With stuff that we're not used to using. So I'm just going to look at that color. And I think with the black underneath, and this is the Amy Howard at Home One Step. This has a built-in top coat. It is a true um, chalk paint, but it does not wet distress like you can do with like DIY or with milk paints. You Okay, Shannon says the classic Pent Art. All right, I got it. I got to see if I got that, Shannon. And if I didn't order it, of course, I just placed an order. Um, but I can do another one because I really want to um, have that kind of porcelain crazing. That's a good crackle, right? It looks like, right, exactly. You could put it over old, um, over a one of the decoupage papers that's like a master painting because... When you go to a museum, you'll see it. Look at those paintings, and a lot of times they have that crazing, and you can create that. You love the color. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Because I don't use colors like this a lot, Shannon, for sure. All right, so here's my paint, and I am just going to. Hmm. What do I have leaching out of this brush? Uh-oh. You never know, right? I always wet my brush first, and I did a little, I call it the brush stroke test to make sure this isn't going to bleed. That's all right. 
Um, I will, when I, so when I begin a piece of furniture, I put a little bit of paint at a joint because I don't want to paint a whole first coat and then go back and see that the whole thing bled. So that's what I do. Okay, whoops, I'm gonna quickly blob this on. Coral is such a nice color and there are pumpkins this color, right? I was thinking fall. So, let's see how it goes. And I'm, and I'm using an inlay today. Wow. Do you guys, like, try to move yourself out of your comfort zone every now and again? It's a really, really good habit to get into. Ah, I'm in a rush. I knew this was going to take me a little bit to paint. And I didn't want to bore you all watching me. What's wrong with your brush? Nothing. It just looked weird. I think as the, you know, I had dipped it, Shannon, in water before and after I did my little brush stroke test. And it, w it was sitting for a while. So the paint, you know, the colors, you know how paint has different pigments. They were kind of, you know, doing their thing, separating out. So it looked a little odd. Okay. Now with trays, you can use them on a table naturally. You can use them hanging on the wall. They look fabulous, right? I did a little gallery wall um, project a couple of years ago using IOG molds more than a couple of years ago. It was pre-pandemic. I think about everything as either pre-pandemic or post-pandemic now, but um, I love it because it has a little bit, it looks like a frame, right? It is a frame. Okay, so there's our first coat. Let me dry this real fast, move my inlays. That's the look you'll get with the Pentart Classic. Okay, and Shannon, that's what you said too, right? The Pentart Classic. And you know, Pentart is, a, I think it's a Polish company. So you know, there's probably, whoa, there go my inlays. There's probably stuff lost in the translation when they translate from English, I mean from Polish to English. All right, I gotta put something on my inlay. You know, the other thing is my cat Walter is at the vet today getting his teeth done, so they had to put him under, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I thought I would distract myself, come on live, do a fun project. So I have to go down, and I'm pretty sure I have it in stock, and try the Pent Art Classic. Now, is it the same application as the, I think I used the Fine Line the other day. I am definitely going to need two coats. I hope two coats is enough. Let's get that second coat on. And when you open up a new thing of paint or your, you know, your paint has been sitting for a while before you, you know, start, always mix your paint up because especially with chalk paints, all that pigment and goodness is right down at the bottom. And 
you'll think your paint is transparent if you don't do that. And I will do the back and sides off camera. This paint is really, really nice. You can use it for underneath milk paint, her Toscana paint, which by the way is 35% off now um, in my shop. And the I still have some a Maker Studio products, which are 50% off because I'm not going to be carrying it anymore. And of course, we're all anticipating IOD, right? Well, I got my shipment, so I have all the new IOD. I bought as much as I was able to because this is limited edition. And that means once it's gone, it's gone. Okay. All right, almost done. Unfortunately, I can't get this shape tray anymore. Isn't this beautiful? Hey, Rose! How is it down in Texas? The te isn't there... Wait, what is that saying about a Texas rose? Or is it a song? <laughs> I Oh, the, the yellow rose of Texas? <gasps> I can't remember. Rose, every time I think of you, or I see your name come up, I think of that song. <laughs> I love that. So Sandy is saying, you would think the fine line crackle would give the kind of cracks you showed. Yes. But it's just the opposite. Big Fine line gives bigger crack than the classic. See, that's the thing. And I wonder if when they were translating from Polish, um, if things got a little, you know, gooped up there with the terminology. So basically, what I need to do is actually just make samples of all of them and then label everything, right? Yay, you finally got some relief. Yay, rain. All right. Good for you, Rose. I know, the tray is beautiful, right? I'm, I'm going to go back to the wholesaler because sometimes they'll get stuff in. You know, they'll be out of it for a few years and they'll get it back in. But, um, whew. My paint is a Kraken, so if you want to create cracking, just put some heat on the paint. And the reason that happens is you've got that layer of paint, right? The topmost part of that layer is drying and, and contracting while the underneath is wet because this is happening very fast. So if you don't want that, what do you do? Let it dry naturally. All right. And I'll show you what, I mean, I'm sure you've all, as furniture painters, as decorative painters, see that happening? And I don't mind that at all. But if you don't want that, and this, this paint is really quite nice and self-leveling, you got to just let it dry naturally. Isn't it a pretty color rose? Am I getting it all over my face? i got it all over me. It is Coral Sea, I believe it's called. Yeah, by Amy Howard at home. I am going to, I, I believe this definitely needs a third coat. I will go later around my inlays and do that in the interest of time. Because um, I want to show you guys how I'm going to place these inlays. All right. Now, let me put my brush in some water. 
So I haven't used, now this is from the Melange Inlay. And I haven't, you know, these are first time use this time now, I'm not reusing anything with this one. So I'm thinking this, now again, I'm thinking fall, Halloween. Um, are you guys familiar with the terrain? shopping site I think they're owned by anthropology um I was looking at some of their you know Halloween stuff and it's cool it's very sophisticated Halloween like adult Halloween um so it kind of inspired me and here now remember when we when I put this down, it's not this way. This is the paint side. It's going to be this way, right? So I'm putting it down just so I could see it, knowing that this is going to get turned around like this, okay? Now, the way I'm doing it, it's definitely got a top and a bottom. Um, the other, that newer paint inlay, it's blue and taupe by... Um, Iron Orchid would be beautiful for this too because it comes down the middle like that. So there isn't really a top and a bottom. Um, but this is fine. I don't mind at all. And these are brown. These are not black. These are brown. So I thought it would look nice with the orange. Of course me because I love balance. See how this branch is coming in and this one's doing the same thing in the same direction even though they're going to be opposite. I would have loved if they had one this way and one that way. All right, so that's option one. And I actually really love that. I could also use these little ones, you know, have these on either side. But I like the idea of flowers. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now, I do not have a ruler near me, but if you do, of course, I'm going to eyeball it like I do everything. Um, really, what you should do is grab a ruler and measure out when you're doing a design like this to the middle. Um, my ruler, of course, is in my uh, vendor booth. So tool bag, so I don't have it, but I'm going to eyeball it. And when you're doing that with these, make sure you cut, you know, pretty tightly around your design so you don't get thrown by the edge of the paper, right? So I'm going to cut this in here. And that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to give myself a little mark right there. So I just gave myself a little mark and that way I can line up the bottom of this bow down here and then the top right there. All right, so let's begin with that. Grab my paint, gotta dry my brush again. Now, are any of you getting Mill U Magazine? Because I just got the new Mill U. Really nice. And if you do get it, maybe I'll do one of my videos, <laughs> one of my lives, where we go through it. Um, but there's a lot of crafting going on, a lot of influence from this, this side of the tracks, right? I was happy to see that. Um, pretty, pretty amazing that that's happening. And also really refreshing. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more paint. When I see this color, do you know who I think of? I think of Doris Day. 
I loved as a kid, and I still do, Doris Day and Rock Hudson movies. And I mean, when I was a kid, they were, you know, old. I just loved them and I loved her houses. They were always, you know, had daisies and beautiful, um, I don't know, just something very comforting about those old movies. Okay, let's put down the paint. So first thing you do, put down some paint because the inlay goes into the paint. And I've used these inlays with milk paint, with um, One Step, DIY, Authentico, everything. They work with everything, they're fabulous. Then I have my inlay and a little tip I got from my friend Joni of Weathered Wings, I always say this, is just give it a mist, just to get it started. So I just give it a light mist Turn it over, grid side up, and then I'm gonna line this up. You have very little time to get that down. So you see me starting from the center, push out, now, Got one little spot right there that didn't get paint. So all I do is lift it up like this and just put some paint down, just like that. It is that easy. I love these, love, love, love. All right. Now I've got my cotton cloth, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of water and press this down. And I also have my brayer. Hey Susan. Amanda, my mill you just arrived yesterday. <gasps> oh, it's got such beautiful stuff, but wait till you see. Let me know what you think after you look at it. I'm pressing this down and you see all of a sudden you see that design really clearly, right? Have you guys heard of Maker TV? That is also something new to me that I just caught wind of. Um, I'm really into silk ribbon embroidery, embroidery, hand quilting, English paper piecing. I, I used to teach all of them. So I was on one of my favorite, um, you know, look at how pretty, silk uh, ribbon embroidery person's site and she was talking about maker tv i haven't found it i don't know what it is but that sounds cool okay you see me with my brayer right look at how nice and clean my brayer is i soaked it in um scrubby soap overnight in some water with a bar of scrubby soap in it there's one now I'm gonna do the others. So remember, I gotta make sure I have the one I want on each side. See, this one is significantly smaller. So, let's see how that looks. That's okay, I'm gonna Put it down towards the bottom maybe, and if I need to put a little something up there, I will. So let's get this one. So I'm being super generous with this paint. Okay, give my design a little mist. Get it started. And then lay this down. Okay. 
from the inside. I'm just kind of pushing it out with my finger. And then grab my rag, wet it. Oh, Susan's asking, do you have, I will, Susan, I don't yet, but I will bring them down and I'm going to have the entire, um, new, the new, the new IOD release is going to be down there as soon as I'm able to sell it. So that will all be there. All right. See me just pressing with this cloth. I'm gonna call this my Doris Day tray. But I have a bunch of those, um, Susan. And remember, Susan, if there's for, for people that are local, um you can order online and request just at the end so you don't pay shipping, in-store pickup, and then I will bring your order down and you could pick it up at G's. Okay, so there's one, and the last one's gonna go on the other side. I think I need more paint. I do. Yeah, I'll bring them down. Absolutely. So I just have to... Susan, I've been going through all my treasures from my old store in my basement and deciding what am I going to sell online? What am I going to bring down to my space? Ugh. And I get just overwhelmed. I really do with all this stuff. I can't tell you. That's why I started bringing out all these trays that I used to use in workshops. And I'm dying to teach workshops again. We just, it's, I just can't figure out the space at G's. There's just, it's just so difficult. And they're so sweet, the owners. They're like ready. Well, Jane, you can you know, clear out the back room. But... They might have a giant armoire down there, you know? So it's hard. So let me just... Okay. So Susan, I'm also looking for a place to have workshops. So if anybody knows anything, I reached out to a bunch of people in the area that give workshops, but they never got back to me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Um, I need, but I need to have a sink and everything for all the paints and stuff. All right. There's that. Give it a mist. I love my misting bottle. Oh my goodness, I would be lost without this. All right. And then this goes down. And I'm just pressing out with my fingers from the center. Because we want really, really good contact. That is key. I missed a spot. Lift this up. See, it's already beginning to transfer. All right. Take my cloth, wet it. And press that down. Here we go. All right, so we see that design coming out, right? I love it. Oh, Susan, that's so sweet. She said she'd love to take a workshop. That would be fun. It would be fun if I could just figure out how to do it. And I could try maybe in G's. Susan, you've been to G's, right? What I'm going to do now, you guys, is dry this. Normally, I, I do let them just sit for an hour. Oh, I didn't um, brayer that. 
but I would let these just sit for at least an hour to dry on their own. But because I'm here doing a live, I'm pushing it a little bit. Okay, there goes my brayer. Um, so I can try maybe with four people and see how that goes. Now you're gonna see these get very milky again as the paper dries. Now I did think for balance, for people that are like obsessed with balance like me, when I was kind of plotting this out that I could have had the bottom of the stem here, the bottom of the stem there, but I didn't. <laughs> this is what I decided. good now it still feels a little cool to me you know how when you touch something and it's cool and you just know it's still oh I'm sweating you just know it's still wet so I don't want you to push it like I'm doing I want you to wait until this is absolutely dry right like bone dry um, that way you have a much better chance of them coming out the way you want again I'm pushing it um, and we'll see, right? So, oh, okay, Susan says, yep, I bought a few things from you. Oh, good, Su Susan, thank you so much. It's pretty full in there, but a great space, yeah. And that's the thing, the owner of G's, you guys, this guy loves, he cleans out houses. So he might bring in, I mean, giant stuff, then you won't see, like, you'll just see a lot of small stuff for a few weeks, but then real big pieces come in again. So, it's hard for me to gauge like, okay, if I, if I have it on this Saturday, what's it going to be like, right? All right, let's start with this middle one since this is the first. So I'm going to spray it. And then I take that cloth again. And I like to just kind of press that water down into the carrier paper just to help with the release of the inlay. And you wait 30 seconds. And there it is, like magic. So pretty, right? Oh, I just love that. Love, love, love. All right, let me put this down. I always use, I put them down, let them dry flat, use them again. All right. Let's do this one. Same thing. Just take your time and push that water down into the carrier paper. And pick a corner. And there is our second one. I love the melange. Mel I love saying melange. <laughs> I love this inlay. I really do. Okay, our last one. Though I might be adding little bumblebees and stuff to this. And same thing. If you could get a hand on it, there we go. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it on the coral, you guys. I really do. I was afraid to do this 
Um, this is get out of your comfort zone Friday, right? Um, I was afraid to do this because I'm like orange, right? But how beautiful will this look on a dining room table, on a coffee table, hung on the wall? That's what I'm thinking because I do have everything kind of going in one direction. Now, to further zhuzh this up, right, there, there's all these little, um, let me see if I could find the page, but there's a page that has bees, you know, smaller things that you could kind of sit, space out at your design and then add to later. Because there's eight pages of stuff, in, at least in this inlay. Or if you did decoupage, say you were cutting stuff out, you can kind of slowly add to it um, until you like what you see. Of course, it's the very, it's like the very, I know I saw, here they are, bees. So there are these bees that if I wanted to, I can add, you know what I mean? Like, let me cut them out. And don't let them get wet like I'm doing. <laughs> Keep your bees dry. Get rid of this paper so I could see what's going on. And there is some type on the bottom. You have to be aware of that when you're doing stuff like that because that immediately says, you know, here, here's the bottom, here's the top. If you don't want that, get rid of the type. Maybe use it on something else. But you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have the bee just kind of floating around whichever way. And yeah, he's gigantic. He's huge. But if I put him or her right up like this, right, and one up there, maybe one down here, or I can, um, I don't know, put any one of the other elements, like cut up some of these flowers and leaves, right? Like cut off some of these branches and put those around. There's tons and tons of options and you're literally limited only by your imagination, which I know that all of you have great imaginations. But this is just the beginning. So when I come back next week, uh, I may or may not have, have added or will add some more inlays, but look at how beautiful. This is still wet, that's why it's shiny, but isn't that absolutely gorgeous on top of this color. I absolutely love it. The other thing I thought about doing, of course, you know I love gilding and doing anything like that. If I really want to go with the red route, the fall route, I could use copper on this. Not, I wouldn't do like this whole top. I might do some taping and banding of copper leaf. So if I do something like that, I'm going to do it during a live. But isn't that beautiful? Hey, Kathy, isn't it a beautiful color? I love it. So, you guys, here's where we got it today. I'm going to, um, off camera, if I want to add some more inlays, I might do that. But then after that, I am going to go around and um, paint like this around here in between. And when you're painting something like this, um, you know, you don't want, I know a lot of people get kind of um, thrown off by the texture that the paper makes. I don't really, but what I'll do, I don't actually at all, <laughs> is I'll just take an artist brush and kind of just painterly put my orange paint, you know, like this and kind of blend it all around you know, only, you know, on this area, the other areas, I could just use my big brush and it'll all be fine because then we're going to be finishing this with some waxes, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I'm not going to just use clear wax. I'm going to do something with some antiquing waxes. So that's it. You guys join me next week. I will be on Monday. 
um, unless something comes up. But I hope to be on Monday at around 11 o'clock and we'll go on to the next step in our beautiful fall, you know, that whole fall feel. I wasn't, you know, again, I was looking at Terrain. If you haven't gone to Terrain, go check out their website and look at their Halloween stuff because a lot of it is so beautiful to me. I don't think necessarily scary. Um, I think of like um, an old mansion, you know, that's kind of beautifully decaying. Um, they have some really neat wreaths and these beautiful owl candles. I mean, everything's a fortune, right? But it was a great inspiration for me. So I'll do stuff like that when I'm trying to think of a project. So go check that out. And I'm also going to come back at some point, right, Amanda, and we'll go over our milieu and see what everybody thinks about um, all this kind of craftsy artisan stuff they have in this, um, I was going to call it this episode. Um, this, it's a bi-monthly, right? So, so I want to go over that with you. Oh, Sandy, thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to go and put the AC on for a few minutes and get rid of some of this humidity, um, that we're having. And I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. And I will see you all on Monday at around 11 o'clock. All right, everybody. 